This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. I've got a chat with Paolo Jr. from Sepultura to share with you. Now, the catalyst for the conversation was due to the launch of their album, Quadra, back in January of 2020. So this chat has been available since then. But I've decided to share with you, the YouTube audience, for a number of reasons. Firstly, it was an opportunity to get to the bottom of whether or not Paolo actually played on those early Sepultura recordings, and he answers the question. Second of all, I believe this is the only long-form conversation out there with Paolo. I've searched high and low, and I can't find another one. Most of you listen via YouTube, so here it is. Now here he is, Paolo Jr., how are you going, Paolo? Hey, how are you, my man? Good. How's, good. how's the uh, the interview schedule and the promotion of this wonderful album, Quadra, been going? Yeah, tough, but good. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of interviews, but it's okay. It's part of it. I bet. Yeah, have you been speaking to a lot of Australian journalists? Well, mainly, uh, most of your interviews have obviously been with other people, but uh, many from other countries, but... Have we taken up a lot of the interview space, so to speak? Because, man, you got to know, and you've been around as long as anybody, Sepultura are a big band in Australia. Yeah, well, you know, this is my 36th uh, year with the band. So mm-hmm. starting up this uh, this new cycle, you know, coming up with the new album, very excited about. You know, the release date, it's February 7th. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and I can't wait to 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 release this thing and be able to to do this, reproduce this all on the on the live uh, situation. So hmm. it will be a new challenge for us. <laughs> I bet. I mean, look, the, the reality is though is that is that I think, and I've mentioned this to Derek already because I've had a chat to him. I think Quadra, and I'm a long time fan. I need to be, need to say this now. I've been a fan since the early '90s, as long as you really could be in Australia, if you know what I'm saying, as a young fella, back in right. the early '90s, as I was. But I actually think this is one of your strongest albums ever. You know, um, it's one of those albums that I just think I, I, I do a lot of swimming, so it's been my accompaniment as I swim because I've got swimming headphones in, and it's vicious. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's brutal, awesome. man. It's so good to listen to when you're swimming. So, so do, do you feel the same? way about it do you feel like because i feel like the band's entering some sort of a twilight dawn you know what i'm saying like you guys are just getting better with age uh i believe so as well you know it's something that uh you know the fact that uh, we use ourselves our career you know to to inspire you know to bring all the elements and i believe uh, the, the, all this mix of uh, of the Sepultura career is it's it's right there on the on the new mature. You know, mm. we have the trash from the trashy side up to the machine messiah side of the. You know, I think we bring a little bit of, uh, of the whole history of the band. You know, and, and it's it's a very unique record. You know, so so it's a was a very hard. Uh, task to to record and you know, to to really reproduce that to, uh, in the record, but uh, at the end everybody is 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 very happy, you know. Hmm. And the band is in a very uh, a special moment in in our career, you know, not only professionally as musicians, but as as friends as as well. So, and uh, I'll be I'll be going back to Brazil next Monday to nice. yep. start start your rehearsal for in preparing uh, the whole thing to 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 kick in the American North American tour first. And uh, very happy, you know. It's going to be a lot of work, but uh, at the end, it's going to be worth it. So, I'm looking forward to to do this once more. <laughs> yeah. Nice, brother. And, and look, it's got to be said, like, uh, you've been there the longest. Uh, you were right there, man. You're credited as Paolo Destructor Jr., bass <laughs> guitar, way back in, uh, what year was that? 1985 on the EP Bestial Devastation. Man, man you've got to know. It, sorry, you go. You're yeah. going to say something. You go. No, it was 85, not 85. 85, no. there you go, yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but that's the thing is, mate, you've got to know that, 
Sepultura's catalogue is just revered. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm, I first got into the band in the early 90s and you were the biggest heavy metal band in the world back then. You know, Metallica were doing their bullshit thing and the Black Album and people had sort of tuned out from that scene, the thrash scene. You know, Megadeth was still doing uh, Countdown uh, to Extinction, I think it was. But then you guys, man, you guys were right at the top of your game. But my question is, did you think, you know, th- almost – well, it's 35 years later. Can you believe that? 35 years later after Bestial Devastation was released, you'd still be here playing brutal heavy metal for the masses. Uh, I never could thought about that, but I, I feel very happy to be still be here and around, you know, and to be able to to do, to be through all the faces of, of this band, you know. And it's, it's very, it's a very unique uh, feeling. You know, mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very uh, blessed person. Yeah, I can say that. You know, to to be able to do what I what I like the most. Mm-hmm. You know, is to play uh, on this band and be able to to travel to to see the world and you know play music for the people that appreciate you know our music. So mm-hmm. I think that's the the biggest compliment that uh, uh, a musician or a band member can can have. You know. It's you know to to be able to go on the stage and and see and share that and see everybody's uh, smile face happy face at the end of the of of the night and going home satisfied you know that's the main yeah you're thing great for that all way. of us yeah you you've always looked like you've had so much fun up there on stage I saw you guys a couple of times in the nineties but I really remember that performance when Derek came into the band because. Yeah, as I say, mate, Australia is, I feel, one of your biggest territories. And I think for Derek to be received as well as what he was back then uh, must yeah. have made you guys feel great. Yeah, it was not easy, you know, to replace. Uh, with, I never said replace, but to, to fill in, hmm. you know, some, yep. someone's, uh, someone else's uh, shoes, you know, after what we achieved back back at the time. So, And I, and I knew uh, only time. Would 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 make uh, make uh, people think differently. And Derek has been with us for 22 years, I believe now. And uh, you know, it's a it's a long ways. You know, I think he has grow up uh, th- through and really filled it up the those shoes in a in a very good way. You know, and uh, and I don't think he has to prove anything to anybody else. And uh, in the new record just established that's a big stamp hmm. on not only for for him itself but I think for all of us you know hmm. yeah no I agree mate and uh, like looking back over your your history too so I tend to divide sepulture up in, into episodes meaning 1986 including morbid visions to beneath the remains sort of in one era or episode and then you've got a rise through to Roots in another episode or another era because of how popular the band became. And then, of course, Derek came on board and there's Against from 1998. And then I think things started – and then, of course, you had uh, uh, Max's brother, of course, in the band, Igor. Uh, and he left, I think, was it uh, Dante was the last album that he had? So that was really another era. But I just feel like, you know, with the greatest of respect to the Cavaliers, and I've spoken to Max plenty of times, so it's no diss to him, mate, but the identity you guys are forming now and forging since the Cavaliers have stepped out of the band – Yes, okay, it's still Sepultura, but it feels like a brand new band in a, in a really good way. And and what I mean by that is it feels like as though you guys are just really setting up for, I've gone through four or five eras there, so let's call this Era 6. Era 6 is just set up so nicely for you guys. So do you feel the same way as well? Do you feel like as though the band has just got it all, It's uh, the, the history has still got to be written, so to speak? Uh, I believe so. You know, uh, like you said, all this, all these changes. You know, and uh, I think uh, the really uh, thing that brought us a new, a new blood was uh, Eloy. You know, mm. when he joined the band, almost he's been in the band for almost ten years now. Mm-hmm. You know, we really he brought a very new uh, blood. You know, he's he's I'm I'm twenty. Almost twenty one years older than he is, and when yeah. he came here with his new energy, you know, made us re- really 
step up, you know, like, fuck, we have this kid and now we have to really, you know, start to play well again, more. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, uh, he, he really challenges, you know, I think that, I believe that it, it is one of the reasons that uh, we're so strong nowadays, you know, he, he really, ha it is a very unique musician, a very, one of the best drums that I've seen, you know, if so, not one of the best. And, uh, you know, it's it really challenge us and to make us, you know, play better and give us more confidence, you know, mm. and, and the fact that for him to be here around for almost 10 years, we, you know, we already know each other better, you know, as persons and as, uh, as musicians, as as being on stage. So mm -hmm. it really helped to develop, you know, to, to achieve uh, a certain level and, 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 accept the new challenge as well i think uh you know i think the band is in uh in a very uh peak of the career i, I believe great you know? yeah I certainly feel the same way. You guys are like the Simpsons, man. You're about as old as the Simpsons, and uh, you just keep on giving. You know, <laughs> it's uh, one of those scenarios where uh, something from my youth just feels like every, every album it's new again. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. So, um, mate, do, do you have a, a personal? You know, I mentioned six eras in the band's history there, but do you have a favourite era yourself, or is it, or is it a case you just like the whole thing? No, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the whole thing, but I'm, I'm very happy on the and wh wh where we are at the moment you know it's a, like i said it's a very special moment for all, all of us mm. you know with a very strong record that really represents the whole the whole uh, simple to the history i believe and uh, you know I've, it's very hard to pick uh, one era I, you know, I you know since we kids you know it went uh, through a lot of uh, changes and a lot of a, a lot of uh, you know uh, different sorts of feelings, mm. but uh, I'm very happy and and where we are nowadays. You know, I'm very confident. I'm older, of course, and but Aren't a little bit wiser as well. <laughs> uh, I believe, you know, and I think that re re it's been reflecting on the music as well. You know, yeah. trying to really represent and not forget our past but respect our, our past and but really focus on the present and looking for the future you know mm. that the pre the moment right now is the it's our moment so it's i feel very confident and very happy mm. to be able to still be here and do what we do so that's the that makes me very happy that's awesome, brother. Yeah, no, that's cool. And uh, look, I hope you don't mind me asking the next question, um, but I haven't seen that you've addressed this online. So if you have, please correct me. But there's a well-circulated quote from Max where he said that you didn't play the bass on the albums prior to Roots. So is that comment from Max, is that accurate? There's uh, Andres record uh, uh, Schizophrenia and uh, Beneath the Remains for me. Okay, that's it. But the other but, albums are but, all you. Yeah, but but I, but I had to to play live, you know, which is which is the main challenge. But uh, mm. you know, whatever you know takes to to make the band happy and to to make it work, we'll do it. But uh, uh, Andres did the recording. I was not. Uh, I was uh, studio scared. You know, I'm still not. Up to this day, yeah, I, I still have some uh, hard time to to record. I really don't like to be in studio that much. It's not mm -hmm. my thing. I like to be on stage and play live. Mm -hmm. But uh, but in, nowadays I'm much more confident, you know, to to be in the studio. But so, it's not. But it's not. It's not my real thing. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, no, well answered from the perspective that I haven't seen you answer it the way you just did then. So thank you very much for doing that. But because I'm a no, bass, that's no problem. and I'm, look, I'm a bass guitarist as well. So I've been playing bass for God. I hate to admit it now, but it's almost thirty years. And uh, wow. cool. <laughs> so it's been a long time, man. And I've got to say, you've been an inspiration in so far as I saw the videos back in the day, and and yourself, and like my era was Faith No More. You guys, Primus, you know the greats, as I as I like to term it. Yeah, you know, some nights. good bass players there, <laughs> definitely. Man. Man, between the three of them and Billy Gould, holy shit. One oh, of the first times 
You, you go, mate. Yeah, you're right. No, he's awesome. He's you know, despite he's been a, uh, a good friend as well. He's a great musician. I've you know? seen that. Yeah, very right. unique. Very unique. I've got to say, one of the one of the reasons I got into Sepultura because I was a massive Faith No More fan back in the day. Billy Gould's one of the reasons I started playing bass was because I think he was either wearing a t-shirt, Sepultura t-shirt, or he was talking oh, yeah. about Sepultura. You know, which is so right. important, though, isn't it? I think I think Mike Patton did the same thing. Of course, he appeared in on Roots as well, and he was wearing a Sepultura t-shirt. I think a couple of times, or talking about the band, and you know, it was really important for me as a young fella to hear the bands that I really respected give a co-sign to another. The band yeah it's nice man you know to to be able to you know we had we had the the first time that i saw billy too and i don't know i was on the video clip falling to pieces yeah he yeah. had the simple to the shirt i was like holy shit look <laughs> at that and then we were able to to meet them you know and became friends and now we very you know good friends you know and for mm. the past and we we respect each other we respect the music and we exchange ideas, like you said, Mike already did some uh, collab with us in many different ways. Right came to play, there you go. Yeah, uh, and uh, and came to play with us live in different situations. And you know, it's good, you know, to have uh, uh, such a strong and and uh, and uh, influential band as Fate No More is. You know, to 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 really. Uh, being fans of the simple food, you know, it's 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 very, it's a very unique feeling. So, but mm. we we have many friends in the music, and we respect each other, and you know, it's 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 part of the thing. So, but Billy, like you said, he's a tremendous bass player. You mm. know, very unique, you know, very unique way of playing the bass and writing songs. So he's he's in, he's a, he, he's amazing. Look, I'm, I'm going to backtrack a bit and I, I really, again, I hope you don't mind me asking this question because I know for a fact Andreas and no doubt Derek is fed up with answering the question about it, but I'm, I'm asking you personally because I know what the band's um, attitude is toward a reformation with Max and I will understand it won't happen and to be honest with you, I'm glad because I think what you guys are doing now is magnificent, but between you personally and Max, has there been a lot of contact in the last sort of decade or so? Not at all. None. Zero. <laughs> mm. you, yeah, you know, uh, we just, you know, separate. Each one of us went to its own path, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know about the future, but right now, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I don't like to force a situation that's not there anymore. So, mm. and I feel if one day it comes, uh, to terms and uh, you know it has to come naturally you know so so far that ha ha hasn't been happening so but uh, I really don't bother and think about that too much anymore you know was that was 20 years ago and I just keep going you know you know it's a you cannot make everybody happy in, the, in this world so I just the the best that you can now is to learn from your mistakes and and keep walking and try to to do bad in the future. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think it's what I say to people who who sort of still sort of harp on about it is that do you think Megadeth would have happened if Dave Mustaine didn't leave Metallica? And and look, I think Soulfly are fantastic. I think what Max done is there is great, but I think what you guys have done is great too. So because of the split when Max went left, we've got these two wonderful heavy metal bands. Isn't that what? And isn't that what it's all about as fans? Because Derek has done such a magnificent job. In some ways, he's done a job that Max could never do with the band. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, uh, Derek is a very unique singer. You know, he he can really sing. You know, he's a mm. he's a American black man. You know, and those motherfuckers can sing. Indeed, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, they, brother, they, yeah. they know, and uh, and uh, and uh, and he he really brought a new approach on the band, you know, as like Eloy as well. You know, he, mm. he's a very unique drummer. He he's a very technical drummer, you know. So those two guys, you know, really make the difference. You know, you can, you know, and of course, me and Andres, we we there for many many years, and we old and. We know each other for a long time. We're, we're like brothers, you know. Indeed. And uh, you yeah. know the, combina the combination of four of us, you know, it's it's, it's what it is making this very unique uh, 
music nowadays. You know, and uh, it's in. You know, it's good to be here, you know, at the end of the day. You know, I'm very happy I'm doing this. And I'm still happy with what I'm doing. I'm still happy with the band. You know, despite of all the all the uh, formations, you know, and we, we this lineup represents the band, represent, mm-hmm. respect the whole history of the, man, the band. And we're not there to... to to hide our past, uh, on uh, we just uh, need to, we're just here to respect and and you know, play the music and and try to to be the best that we can and mm-hmm. and I think we are achieving this this with this new great. record. Yeah, and great, oh. ma- massively agreed. And mate, I'll just do a time check. Have you got an interview in a minute's time or so? Or can I just ask a couple more questions? Uh, no, you go ahead. You can do it more. No problem. Mate, because I'm a bass guitarist, I've always been fascinated with a professional guitarist such as yourself, the gear that you use. Now, I read a, uh, an interview just before we got onto the chat, and you're using Zon bass guitars, man, and of course, Billy Gould, that's how I knew Zon. So how did you get onto Zon? Because they're magnificent in- instruments, and you play them so well. Because of Billy. He's the one that <laughs> introduced me to Zon. There you, you know? go. Yeah. The, the Zon is, is based in San Francisco, and uh, Billy... Lives in San Francisco, and uh, back at the, the, the uh, on the on the time I was I was uh, using the Alembics, and uh, yes, I think I was saw that. K- yeah. yeah, it was back on the KOZD. And uh, one day Billy comes to me, he's like, "Dude, you need to check out this bass. You know, this guy is building some very unique uh, bass guitars. You should check it out." And mm. and I came to meet Joe Zahn. And then he let me borrow one of the bases. So like, just bring this on the on the road with you. Try out, see if you like it, and we can make adjustments for you. Uh, do whatever you like. And I've been with since for over 20, 26 years now, I believe. You know, and they are very unique instruments. You know, the Joe Zone is an amazing guy. He's a ma- uh, amazing luthier. You know. And every single bass that I have is is very personal. You know, it's a very unique uh, instrument, and yeah. you know, and um, I love them. You know, they sound great. You know, despite what we do on on the studio, recording with different uh, in- instruments, but that's you know, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a totally different world. You know, I didn't use any of my pedals that uh. I'll, I'll, you know, Ian's had a different approach, but uh, yep. you know, but uh, you know, but a combination that I use, I use the zone bases nowadays with the with the dark glass. Dark glass, uh, okay, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, some mixture with the uh, uh, MXRs. I have Dunlop as well, and there's a bunch. Of, uh, Right now, I cannot really tell you what I'm using because I'm I'm switching everything around. You're switching. Around. Okay, I was going to ask yeah, you that. Yeah, because I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 I get a new I got just got a new pedal board from Voodoo Lab that I'm trying out. Uh, yeah. To see if it's going to work, but um, I'm, I'm still going to use the 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 dark glass the stuff. But I'm, I'm I just got some new different pedals that I'm trying out, trying to do a new a different approach for this new new touring. Just you know, trying to keep the the same style of sound that I have, the distortion clean, but yeah. but trying to approach it in a different way to use the the wah-wahs and the, some of the effects and you know, all the other stuff. But uh, I really don't know what I'm going to be using. But uh, I'm going to still stick around the same uh, brands that I've been using for years. <laughs> no, but definitely, the own bases are going to be there. He's he's ready to to. Uh, I've been talking to him too. There's a new bass that he hasn't put it put out yet on the market that I really want to try. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been talking to him too. Like, dude, I need I need that bass. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of curious though because my my dream bass I must say is I love Zon by the way of course you know like for all the reasons that you mentioned but Alembic like um, status you know the the bass that Mark King from Level Forty Two uses just that mm. slap because I play a lot of slap bass so that you know that sound there did you found find that when you played the Alembic it had just gnarly slap sound. Uh, no, yeah, but, you know, it, 
the Olympics has been you know, on the, in, a, in a many many different uh, uh, styles of, of music. You know, it's mm. a search of great instruments like the Fenders, like Warwicks, like you know, like the Spectres, you know, Sadovsky. It's very it's very unique instruments, you know. But uh, the Olympics back then, I, I really like it because uh, I was inspired by uh, you know John Paul Jones, John Into Style, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Squire. Stanley Clark and you know, all those guys. Stanley you know, Clark, King, the master. Well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mark King as well. You know, the, all those guys used uh, Alembics, and uh, mm. it was, uh, it's a very unique sound, and and uh, oh, and it's the basic sound of uh, Chaos AD. It's the Alembics. Uh, okay, know, and, that's uh, really good to know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used two Alembics to record Chaos AD, and a music man to record Roots with some some parts with the zones. Is that a five string and, uh, or a four string music man? So is that a Stingray or a Sterling that you use there? It's uh, mine is a uh, uh, I forgot the name. It's a, I think it's a Cutlass one. It's old. Mine is a, a Grand Five Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. from way mine, back, uh, man. Yeah, mine is old. Uh, I don't even use it in, anymore live. You know, I just had a, have it at home. And it's been sitting in my house for a long time. But uh, it's a Graphite neck that I, I swapped for from a uh, Yamaha that I got it. Okay. And I went went back to Brazil, and I saw this this bass at the store, and I was like, "Dude, uh, you know, I, I like to have. How how can I get this bass?" And the guy is like, "Oh, the owner is either for looking for a trade or or money." I was like, oh, hmm. "I just brought from the United States this brand new five string." I think it was a TBR Yamaha. Oh, t Tobias. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, TBR, uh, some, some, something like that. I can't remember the model. But yeah. I was like, I have this brand new base. It's, it's, you know, it costs a lot of money. I'm willing to trade with him. Uh, just trade if he'd like to. I was like, and it was a very expensive base. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. Let's swap bases. Mm -hmm. So that's the history of my music, man. <laughs> and uh, from that, I used the the zones many years to record I have a eight string zone that uh, I use you know in a, in a lot of uh, details for the for for some of the records is that right know. eight string bass uh, yeah it's uh, you know it's double double strings like the hmm. 12 string guitars yeah I know the one like, like Doug Pinnick from yeah. King's X yeah exactly and a lot of the bass players back then on the on the on the on the 70s and the 80s like Chris Squire uh John Paul Jones, all those guys had those bases, you know, they, they use it somehow. And uh, and uh, one day Joe Zorn showed me, oh, I have eight strings. I'm like, oh, shit, I need one of these things. <laughs> so I still have it. And I did use a Machine Messiah as well to play the Machine Sweet. Messiah song. Okay, good to know. And uh, yeah, I, and I still, I did some stuff, uh, you know, I, I, I really, really, I need to, to bring it back to, to the US because he needs to, to do some repairs on the on that bass, but I would really like to bring that back on on the road to use, you know, different songs, especially from Machine Messiah. But mm. you know, but the songs are there, you know, forever. I believe. <laughs> well, you really when I when I think of Zon, I think of yourself and Billy Gould. That's really it. Like I know there are other like lots of other players that that but that none is in the spotlight as you two. You know, so it's really good to know that and give it all that context to it all. And and I've got to ask too: Do you play? I might have read this wrong, but I read that you play DR strings. So if that's not the case, what sort of strings do you play? Uh, I've been playing DR still for twenty six years. Okay, there it's you been, go. I've been yeah. uh, I've been with them for many many years. You yeah. Know? And uh, they amazing company as well. The string sounds sounds great. You know, I have I have no intention. Of switch them. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they, don't want, they don't want me anymore, so then I have no choice. Just as a footnote, because I, if, if it's cool with you, I plan on releasing this as a podcast, an episode of my podcast series. And look, I've ch I, I play basses of many people on my podcast know, and I've used Ernie Ball, uh, and when I say that the pink packet, I can't even tell you the bloody gauges off the top of my head right now, but I tried to swap away from them to... Oh, I can't, there's been a few brands I've tried to swap away to, but oh my god, it felt like shit, and I could not play. I couldn't be me. And for people who don't know, strings are so important to the way a musician, guitarist, or a bass player plays that without them, you often you, even your own instrument feels foreign. 
yeah, no, it's uh, every single you know part of the you know strings are very you know important you know when you have the support from the company as well you know to be on able to be on tour you know mm. and uh, it, I think strings it's it's a very unique piece to for your sound you know depends where you want to go and for me what's been working the best for the for, for, for many many years is the dr strings you know mm. i used to use different gauges and but i i i came back to the to the the, the 45s through 130 got 130 uh, standard, there you go. yeah, yeah the five string yeah. Yeah, there you go yeah. and five strings yeah most of most of the the bases that i have is uh five strings i have because i got used to to the thickness of the <laughs> of the alembics you know yeah that indeed. i uh, even when I played through the fenders, I had to to have the five string because the the neck was a little thicker. And uh, and when you play the four strings, the, the the jazz bass, for instance, the the it's just a matter to get used to. But uh, they're very the, the strings are very uh, close together. Mm. But it's I uh, got so because the Olympics has a, a such a big neck, you know, and the the strings are a little bit more spaced. Makes they are the, indeed, the yeah. difference, yeah. Makes a massive makes difference. Makes a little bit of the difference, you know. So I just got used to. So uh, that's why I've been using the the this uh, five strings, and I, even that I have a small hands, I know I I very I feel very comfortable too with the with the five strings as well. I can hear it. I can hear it in the background there. Yeah. Look, I, I think you know, like I switched to five strings a couple of years back, and it was hard. Like I remember the switch over and having that extra B string in there below the E. It just, I, I fucked up a lot and I felt like shit for a couple of months, but then eventually I got really used to it and I found that I, I could, I actually can't go back to a four string now. Do you find the same yeah, thing? Yeah, no, it's, it's just a matter to get used to, you know, but uh, like uh, when I, did, I went to record on KZD on this record as well. Hmm. Uh, uh, and back then, Andy Wallace was taping the fifth string. Andy Wallace, that, uh, there you go. So, it's, so this way that it won't rumble around and make a weird noise and, and mess it up with the recording. And I did, uh, yes, did the same thing in the, on this record as well. He was using pieces of cloth and sponge to, to mute the strings that I, I was not using on the particular songs. Yeah, but, okay. you know. Yeah, I've, I've heard you mention that and, and you've talked about how when you play uh, in the studio, like I read an interview just before we, we, we had this conversation and you talked about how you didn't think your arms were sort of sorted for bass playing. Is that, is that uh, there's a quote around that. Can you recall that? Uh, I think it was with Guitar World or something like that or you said your fingers or your hands weren't because you said that you were a very you basically said you were a very percussive bassist meaning that you hit a lot of the strings at the same time which I understood yeah. because you're playing very aggressive music yeah I played you know this record was a little bit different but uh, I play very hard you know sometimes the strings rumble so uh, the, um, this Jens was doing a lot of the beauty playing I was playing he was Holding up the strings. If you see the last, uh, the latest video hmm. from the uh, from the studio series, you can see him doing all this <laughs> muting stuff. You know, just to make sound right and not to rumble a lot because uh, a lot of uh, there was a lot of details on the songs. Hmm. But uh, it's just uh, some tricks that you use uh, for the studio recording. You know, and that it's, it's never be able to be. Possible to 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 do that live. Live is a different situation. You just mm. let everything rumble. It sounds good. <laughs> Indeed, it does, mate. Well, you're an outstanding bassist, as we've just talked about. You certainly know your gear, and I've really enjoyed having the chat about that, mate. So, look, I, I mean, I've spoken to Derek about it, but I know you guys plan on being down within the next eighteen months or so. So, I can't wait to see you guys again off the back of Quadra. And certainly, mate, as you know, I'm a bassist, so you know who I'm going to be standing in front of when you guys perform eventually. So thank you so much for doing what you've done through the years, brother. It's been a, awesome to have a chat with you finally. Thank you very much and I appreciate the, the, the support from all these years and you know, we're trying to to do the best weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a great job, brother. So I really, you know, I want to express that and I want to appreciate, give you my appreciation for that because um, there have been times in my life that have been quite tough, to be honest with you, but Sepultura have been there. So, man, it's just good to talk to you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for the support. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a conversation with Paolo Zisto Jr. from Sepultura. He certainly has a story to tell. I hope he does that one day, whether he does an even longer conversation. I'd love to do that with him or uh, writes a book. That'd be great because, you know, he might not have been credited. Sorry, he may be credited on the Bestial Devastation EP as the bassist, even though he didn't play it. But he has certainly been around the band since way back in 83, 84 or 85. So... The entire journey almost, he has been there. Good luck to him. Wish him well. All right. If you like listening, maybe you like reading, I've written a book. Scars and Guitars, Volume 1. Go over to the website, click on the link in the banner on the home page there, and you'll be taken to a marketplace of your choice. Download a sample. You know how to do the rest. Buy it or don't, I don't mind either way. But if you do buy it, do hit me up because I want to thank you in person. And on that note, I've got some more information about the book to share with you. Before we get to that, I want to bid you a fond farewell. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast series. Until next time, it's a goodbye for now. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal, and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a, a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Superjoint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Ball Gear write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self-aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded and, and he was into having his, his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for, for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five and Manson gave me that name and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favorite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book.